The focus of this lesson is on solving systems of equations by using the method of substitution. And the method of substitution procedure is listed here, and you can go ahead and read these and rewind back at any point if you need to. But I'm going to go ahead and show by using examples. Now keep in mind, just as it with the method of graphing that you use for solving systems, you can have a specific solution, which is a point, but you also could have no solutions or an infinite number of solutions, so an infinite number of points. So keep that as in mind as we're going through. So let's go ahead and look at this first example. I want to solve by substitution. The ultimate goal is to get one equation in terms of one variable. Right now I've got two equations in terms of two variables. So the way you do this is you take your first step and you solve one of the equations in terms of one variable. Notice my second equation is already solved for x because x is isolated on one side of the equation. So my first step is done. So then my next step is to ultimately use substitution, and I'm going to abbreviate that here. And in place of x, I can always write y plus 4 because I'm saying x is y plus 4. They're the same thing. So I can rewrite my first equation. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute into my other equation, my first equation, my new x, which is y plus 4. And notice when I do this, what happens is I end up with an equation in terms of one variable, which is something I've been solving for a very long time. So you shouldn't have any problems determining your y. I'm going to distribute my 3 and get 3y plus 12 plus 2y is 27. I'm going to combine like terms and get 5y plus 12 is 27. And then I'm going to go ahead and subtract 12 from both sides and I get 5y equals 15 divide by 5, I get y equals 3. Now you may be tempted at this point to stop and think that you've solved the system, but ultimately you've only determined one of the variables. A solution consists of an x and a y. So what I do again is basically I resubstitute now, but I replace wherever I see a y, I can put in a 3. So you can use any equation, it doesn't matter which. I'm going to go ahead and just use the second equation. And in place of y, I can plug in a 3. So this will say x equals 3 plus 4. So I'm ultimately saying that my x should be 7. So my solution overall is the point 7 comma 3. So my x comma my y. Now if I want to determine if this truly is the case, I can do a check. So I'm going to go ahead and show and demonstrate the check. You basically use your original system and you plug in the point. So you plug in the x for the x and the y for the y. So in my first equation, it said 3x plus 2y is 27. We'll go ahead and plug in the 7 for the x and the 3 for the y. So I get 21 plus 6 is 27. Well, clearly 21 plus 6 truly is 27, so that checks out. And then I can go ahead and do the same for my second equation, which said x equals y plus 4. So in place of my x, I can plug in a 7. And in place of my y, I can plug in a 3. Well, 7 equal to 3 plus 4? Well, clearly that's true as well. So notice my point satisfies both equations, so it ultimately is my solution. So my solution is the point 7, 3. Let's go ahead and take a look at another example. So I have the system 2x plus 8y equals 3, and x equals 8 minus 4y. So if I want to solve the system, I can again use the method of substitution. And what I would have to do as my first step is make sure one equation is solved for in terms of one variable. Well, that's already done in my second equation because x is isolated, so x is solved for. So then now, ultimately again, I can just start by substituting. So wherever there's an x, I can replace it with 8 minus 4y. So I'm going to do that in my other equation, which says 2 times x plus 8y equals 3. So in place of x, I'm going to put in 8 minus 4y because they're equivalent. 
So notice now I have a system, or I have an equation in terms of one variable. So this is something I can easily solve for. So I need to distribute, so be careful and make sure you do that. And you get 16 minus 8y plus 8y equals 3. Combine like terms, you get 16 equals 3. Notice how this example differs from the prior example. Your x disappeared. When that happens, you're either going to have what we call a contradiction or an identity. In this case, because this statement is actually false, 16 doesn't equal 3, we say this is a contradiction. So then ultimately, what's my solution? Well, my solution's no solution because no matter what point I pick, 16 will never be equal to 3. That's never going to happen, so I will not have a solution. So no point will satisfy both of these equations. So my solution is no solution. So let's go ahead and take a look at another example where I have the system 12x minus 16y equals 8 and 3x equals 4y plus 2. So I want to solve this system by using the method of substitution, but the very first step is always to see if one of the equations is solved for a variable. And notice that isn't the case here. So ultimately I need to make sure that I solve one of my equations in terms of a variable. So I need to solve in terms of one variable. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'm going to use the second equation because it looks as though if I just divide every term by 3 I'll have x solved for. So I'm going to do that and I get x equals 4 thirds times y plus 2 thirds. So my x is equivalent to 4 thirds y plus 2 thirds. So then now I can ultimately use my step 2 which is substitution and in place of my other equation I can substitute for the x. So it says 12 times x minus 16y equals 8. Well, what's my new x? It's 4 thirds times y plus 2 thirds. Now you might have to work with fractions sometimes, so you should be able to work with those. So 12 divided by 3 is 4, times 4 is 16, and then I have my y. 12 divided by 3 is 4, times 2 is a positive 8 minus 16y equals 8. I combine like terms and I end up with 8 equals 8. Again, notice that your x disappeared. So this isn't where you're going to have one specific point as a solution. But this time it says 8 equals 8. Well that's always true, right? So if it's true we say it's an identity. So if it's always true then my solution consists of all an infinite number of points that satisfy either of my lines. So the way I write my solu solution is using set notation and I said it's a set of all points, so x comma y, such that I satisfy one of these two equations. So I'm going to go ahead and just list the second equation. So 3x equals 4y plus 2. So this is ultimately, if you were to graph these two equations, these lines would overlap. They would be the exact same line. Now let's go ahead and take a look at an example where we are working with fractions. Ultimately, if you work with fractions, you're going to, it, it kind of creates a more difficult situation because fractions are a little more difficult to work with than integers. But we shouldn't have any issues ultimately. Because here's the idea. If I have a situation where I have all these fraction terms, what I can do is I can multiply my equation by the least common denominator for that equation. So for example, if I look at this first equation here, I have x over 5 and 2y over, we can go ahead and write what this is over, so it's 2y over 1 equals 16 fifths. So then everything looks like a fraction. Well, what's the least common denominator of my first equation? Well, the least common denominator is 5. So if I multiply every term by 5, then that would ultimately get rid of the fractions. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to have 5 times x over 5 plus 5 times 2y over 1 equals 5 times 
16 fifths. And you don't have to show all this work, but watch what happens. These fives cancel. You're left with x plus 10y, 5 times 2y is 10y, equals these fives cancel. So you get equals 16. So my first equation can be written as x plus 10y equals 16. I'm saying this is an equivalent equation. And the reason you're allowed to do that is because it's an equation. As long as you do the same thing to both sides, the equation remains balanced. So let's go ahead and do the same thing for our second equation. But this time, the least common denominator is not 5, it's 10, because 5 times 2 is 10. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply every term. So make sure you do every term. It doesn't matter what side of the equation falls on. Every term, multiply it by 10. So I'm going to do that. And I'm just rewriting right now so that you can see that I'm multiplying by 10 on every term. So notice 5 goes into 10 twice. So 2 times 3x is 6x. 2 goes into 10 a perfect 5 times. So 5 times y is 5y. And then 5 goes into 10 twice. 2 times a negative 7 is a negative 14. So my new system that I'm solving is the system x plus 10y equals 16, and then 6x plus 5y equals a negative 14. So now I'm going to go ahead and solve my system that I rewrote without the fractions. And the first thing I have to do is make sure that one of my variables is solved for. So I need to solve for one of my variables. So I'm going to go ahead and just use the first equation and solve for the variable x. So x equals 16 minus 10y. So I subtracted 10y from both sides. So then what this enables me to do is move to my step two where I do substitution and I'm going to substitute into my second equation, the equation I wasn't working with. So in place of x, I can put in what x is, which is 16 minus 2y or 10y. So I'm going to just rewrite this and I'm going to replace x with the 16 minus 10y. So then now I have an equation in terms of one variable, which is something I can solve for easily. So 6 times 16 is 96, minus 6 times 10y, which is a negative 60y, plus 5y equals a negative 14. Combine my like terms, I'm going to get negative 55y plus 96 equals a negative 14. And then I'm going to subtract 96 from both sides. So when I do that, I get a negative 110 on the right-hand side. And then I can divide by negative 55 on both sides. So I get y equals a positive 2. I'm not done, because now I have to substitute again. And I can use any equation. So I'm going to use my first equation again. But in place of my y, I can put in 2. So this is x plus 10 times my y, which is 2, equals 16. So x, e x plus 20 equals 16. Subtract 20 from both sides, I get x equals a negative 4. So I'm saying my solution is the point negative 4 comma 2. So again, you can check this. Um, I'm going to just do a very quick check. Um, x is negative 4 plus 10 times my y, which is 2, should equal 16. Well, negative 4 plus 20 clearly is 16, so that checks. Plug into my second equation, 6 times my x, which is negative 4, plus my 5 times my y, which is 2, should equal negative 14. So negative 24 plus 10 definitely equals negative 14. So you see that this checks out. So that completes our lesson for solving systems by substitution.